Welcome to the Vermont Affordable Housing Show. Uh, today we're going to celebrate uh, Northgate's 30 years of housing affordability and resident control. My name is Erhart Monka. I'm your host today. I'm uh, the coordinator for the Vermont Affordable Housing Coalition. Uh, and with me today, uh, to my immediate right, is uh, Linda Romeo, who is a longtime resident at Northgate Housing in the New North End of Burlington. Uh, and Linda is also the secretary of our resident uh, controlled uh, board of directors. And with me also uh, on my far right is uh, Carol Jaramillo, who is our um, community builder at the Northgate Residence Ownership Corporation. So thanks to both of you for uh, joining us uh, Thank today. Thank you for having us. Um, we're going to feature um, Northgate Housing, which, like I said, is celebrating its 30th uh, anniversary this year. Had a celebration on Saturday. But uh, before we get into that, I have a couple of quick announcements. Um, just a uh, first reminder that this is a uh, live call-in show. Uh, our uh, phone number is 862-3966. If you have any questions or comments on today's topic, uh, please feel free to call in and we'll do our best to, uh, to respond to your question or your comment. And in terms of a couple of upcoming housing-related events, uh, first and foremost, I wanted to uh, make sure that folks out there are aware of the Mayor's uh, Burlington Housing Summit, which is happening next Tuesday, June 11th, uh, from 12 to 5 uh, at City Hall. And then uh, there's going to be a town hall from 6 to 8 in the evening also at City Hall. And there'll be uh, a uh, web link posted at the end of the show with more information on that. Uh, also, uh, coming up in two weeks, um, <clears throat> will be the annual release of our National Income Housing Coalition's annual Out of Reach Report, uh, which will provide sort of the latest information on housing affordability or how, uh, I should say, how uh, uh, how little uh, our housing in Vermont is, uh, is affordable. Um, that's going to be released next Tuesday, June 18th. Um, and then lastly, uh, for folks who are interested, uh, there's been an ongoing uh, uh, look at the uh, Burlington City's inclusionary zoning ordinance. Uh, that started a couple of years ago with an inclusionary zoning work group. Um, then uh, the city councils, um, community development, and neighborhood revitalization and ordinance committees looked at it, and it's now been with the Planning Commission. Uh, the Planning Commission has marked it up and has uh, some revisions uh, ready for public hearing, um, which will be in three weeks uh, on um, Tuesday, uh, June 25th at 6.45 p.m. Uh, in Conference Room 12 in City Hall. Um, so with, uh, with those announcements, uh, having uh, have been made. I um, want to turn to our topic for the day and uh, um, talk a little bit about Northgate Apartments, the Northgate Residence Ownership uh, Corporation, and uh, I'll uh, turn to maybe first uh, to Carol uh, and um, say, uh, ask Carol maybe if you could uh, tell folks a little bit, uh, folks in the audience, a little bit about uh, Northgate. Folks, not everybody is uh, necessarily going to be familiar with Northgate, and uh, sometimes these shows get broadcast uh, through the rest of the public access network around the state of Vermont. So uh, maybe give us a little bit of an overview for our, our viewing audience what Northgate is and, and um, what it uh, means here to, to Burlington. Absolutely. Um, at first glance, as you're driving by Northgate, it's going to look like an ordinary apartment complex. It is actually the largest affordable housing complex in the state of Vermont. Um, what makes Northgate unique is that it is resident owned, it is resident operated and directed. We have a board of directors uh, comprised of 13 people, nine of whom are residents, four of whom are uh, our community um, reps, and they give us expertise such as housing and social work, um, uh, energy efficiency. Um, Northgate is a community, so as you as you drive into Northgate, you're going to see some beautiful housing. Yeah. It's beautifully landscaped, um, but what people don't see. Um, and what they couldn't know just from looking at Northgate is that um, Northgate almost wasn't. Um, there was a time when, um, as it was when it was developed in the very beginning, um, the the developers got a very very special deal. Um, I think it maybe was a one percent interest rate mortgage, um, and they were able to to build Northgate with the understanding that if they prepaid their loans, they could then sell it and do whatever they wanted with it. These, these were loans from Housing and Urban Development. They were. Yeah. And so in, uh, in 
the late 1980s, um, that's exactly what was going to happen. The, the developers, the owners, were, were going to flip the property, and it was supposed to be made into um, a, a very upscale na neighborhood. Um, I've heard golf courses, condos, what have you. Wow, I, I never heard the golf courses. Right. Um, but <laughs> I, I, just, uh, and its location in the new north, north end of Burlington, like what's next door uh, to, to Northgate? We're talking about like in the 80s, uh, I think uh, hadn't North Shore condos just been developed and we were- Just beginning to be developed. I think they, con they came in in 89, I, I believe. Yeah. We North, Northgate's a, right on, on the shores of Lake Champlain, so it's prime real estate. Yeah. Um, and, and frankly, Northgate was built with the understanding that it wasn't supposed to last. Mm -hmm. It wasn't supposed to be there. Um, but that meant that 336 families would be displaced if they couldn't afford to buy their homes. Um, and I, I just said this at our annual uh, gathering on Saturday, but... Um, and, and I hear it's not urban legend, but I thought it might have been when, um, when Bernie Sanders, who was mayor of Burlington at that time, heard that 30, 336 families could be displaced, he said, over my dead body. And that's when the wheels started to be in motion uh, so that, um, you know, th federal, state, local um, partnerships formed to save Northgate. Um, fast forward to 2019, it's been 30 years since the residents uh, bought out, owned, and operate Northgate. And I really do mean owned. It's owned as a collective. The board of directors uh, at that time, in, in 2009, I believe, was our last buyout. And um, the, the board of directors signed a transfer of, of ownership yeah. document. So... What Northgate is, is it is a very unique community, resident-owned, re resident-directed. The, the residents have say in everything. Um, Maloney property, Properties is our property manager. They, they are very proud to be the property manager. They have, um, they have been our property manager for 30 years. But what people don't understand, most people don't understand, is that Maloney Properties does not own Northgate, the residents do. Uh, it's a very inclusive, diverse community, and we're very proud of that, represented by, I think, 22 different countries. Wow. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I, knowing Northgate as I do, I, I know it's probably one of the most diverse communities in the, in the, entire, uh, in the entire state. So turning to Linda for a second. Linda, um, you've been a longtime resident. Tell us a little bit about, you know, how long, uh, how long have you been at Northgate? <laughs> Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, I know you were there pretty much at the beginning. Talk about that a little bit and, and what Northgate's meant to you and, and to your family. Okay. Um, I have been a resident for 48 years. Wow. So I was in that original <laughs> beginning. Um, I raised my family there. In the, in the very beginning, we had some pretty tough times. Yeah. The people who owned it didn't take care of us. I mean, didn't take care of the units. Our electric heat used to run us more than our rent. And we used to have sewerage that would back up into our units. We could call and it'd be days on end with no answers. Um, it, it just was a pretty tough going. And then when we discovered this rumor, as it started out to be, that they were going to be sold from out and under us, we decided we were going to get help. And we went to city council, we took our bills, we protested what was going on. Yeah. And luckily we won, but it's a community. To, I raised my family there. My family has now got a family of their own. They're very, very lucky to have, they're very proud. We have a good school district. We're right on the bus line. And as Carol pointed out, we're represented by 22 different yeah. nations and, and it's, it's a special place to live. And helping the residents as, as a board of director, it's helping the residents to understand that they do own it. Yeah. So um, what, as a uh, resident board leader, um, what, how do you see your role and how does, how does, that, how does that work? It's, it's just very important to know what we need, what we want, what we would like to see done and be able to bring it forth, bring it, it to volition, and, and we do those things. And 
So when somebody has like, let's say a problem with their apartment, what, what happens? We just, you call in the office and, and within, within two hours, someone is at your unit. It's taken care of immediately. We don't have any problems to worry about because the minute you call, it's, t it's addressed. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just wonderful to know that we don't have to put up mm -hmm. with any kind of um, deterioration. As people probably have seen Northgate lately, we're in a rehab again. Right. We're, we're redoing our apartments. Yeah, yeah it's so. almost, I mean, as a longtime board member myself, I know it's almost constant. Yeah, There's always it is. Something, something going, going on. on. <laughs> and um, well, we'll maybe see a little bit of this later. Maybe uh, if we can mm -hmm. um, show folks some before and after shots, mm -hmm. people who may not have been around 30 years ago don't remember what it looked like. Uh, I know when I was on the city council back in the 80s, I, I saw you guys down there all, all all, all the time right. um, with uh, you know the issues that um, weren't getting weren't getting taken care of and right. the outrageous electric heating bills that, um, that oh you, that they you were had. <laughs> that they were just uh, crazy. I mean it was a decision whether you had heat or you 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 were going to pay your rent yeah. or eat I your, mean your traditional heat yes. or eat choice yes. yeah exactly I remember you telling me also that some I don't know if this was you or or Kathy Miles or some of the uh, other longtime residents used to talk about how you'd have like frost build up in your kitchen cabinets to, I used to be I used to have to shovel snow out of my kitchen <laughs> from between the, wow. the glass doors <laughs> yeah I mean it was it was really very poor conditions, very poor. Well, and, and that's all been taken care of, I And remember. we have, no, right now, uh, I mean, my my heating bill is under $40 a month. Wow. I, I really couldn't ask for a better place yeah. to live. Yeah. I have a community around me that's supportive, and I know that if I have questions, I'll get answers. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the way, you know, those of us who are involved in um, making sure that Northgate didn't, uh, uh, didn't displace 336 families uh, who were involved back in the day. This is right. kind of the vision that that we had, and I'm so glad to have seen it, you know, come to fruition for uh, over over the last 30 years. Um, so this past weekend, um, we had a, a special event at, at Northgate. Maybe if both of you could kind of fill in, tell um, our audience a little bit about uh, what uh, what we were doing up at Northgate this weekend. Absolutely. We just celebrated 30 years of resident ownership uh, at Northgate, and um, we did have a celebration. We, we mixed it into our annual meeting so that um, we could re-elect our resident directors, um, but we felt that it was, it was noteworthy that um, we celebrate this 30 years. Uh, we talk about affordability a lot, um, and there's more to housing than than sim simply affordability, which is very, very, very important. But one of the things that we want to celebrate and that we do celebrate at Northgate is is not only affordability, but decent housing, safe housing. Um, just because something is affordable doesn't mean it, it has to be in an unsafe neighborhood right. or, or you can't have curb appeal. Um, and, and I... I always say to folks that everybody wants affordability. If you've ever had a mortgage for a house, you look for the lowest rates you can, you refinance when you can. That's a person searching for affordability. And um, so it, it's, it's not just uh, people who happen to live in uh, rental units that want affordability. Everyone wants that deal. Everyone wants affordability. But at the same time, you want a decent place to right. live. You want quality, too. You want um, quality. Yeah. You, you want, want it to look nice. You, you want to be able to um, allow your children to go out to the playgrounds without having to worry about them. And that's what we do have at Northgate. And, and so is it all low income? No. Um, Northgate is, is uh, multi-income, multi-generational housing. And um, so we, we have uh, quite a robust um, youth population, but more interestingly right now, um, because people are aging in place, we now have more uh, people 50 and older who are at Northgate. And um, so we're very lucky enough to have a budget uh, that allows us to also have programming at, at Northgate, special events and programming. 
So um, we, we do have things like play dates for, for toddlers, um, but we're beginning to have more programming for our over 50 crowd right. because that's 28 percent right now of our, of our residents. Well, Linda, you do a lot of volunteering, so what are some of the things that you get engaged in uh, and what are some of, the th some of those services that we're providing, especially for seniors? We, we uh, like I said, Carol said, we have a play date for toddlers. We've, uh, we've gotten our seniors together. We go to lunch. We have a senior evening where we all get together. We cook a meal. We sit down and we eat and we visit. Um, we have a food pantry. We deliver commodities to our seniors. Um, You've got a van, We have too. a van that, yes. So when yes. folks need to go shopping down the avenue, right. um, the van can, can take people. Or if they have doctor's appointments, anything that they need, all they do is call in, and the van is free. It's a ride to wherever you need to go. Right. So um, one of the things that has impressed me about Northgate, especially um, 30 years afterwards, you, uh, Carol, you mentioned, the mixed income aspect, and I know we have a, a fairly complicated uh, rental system, but um, one of the things that's always amazed me is that we're able to steward Northgate uh, and even our quote unquote market rents are way below market. Way below market. Yeah, I, I don't know the exact number and I'm not <laughs> sure if you know the exact numbers, but I... Um, I, I I'm not sure about the exact number, yeah. but it's at least 50% lower than, than yeah. what's out there in, in um, downtown Burlington for, say, a three-bedroom apartment. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, yeah. I think our, our two-bedroom apartments are roughly, what, $1,000 or something like that, maybe? Oh, if that. For, for market, it, yeah. I think they're even low, lower yeah. than that. For our market rates mm -hmm. are below, two-bedroom apartments below? I, I, could, be, wow. I could be wrong, um, yeah. but uh, when, I, when I did a... a cost comparison. Um, you'll see on our timeline um, our, our rents. There's a, there's a little, ad, there was an advertisement about what our rents were back in 1969. And this is before even um, the residents owned it. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, Nor Northgate was built in 1969 and 1970. So the property actually is 50 years old yeah. this year. Uh, it's been controlled and owned by the residents for 30 years. But um, it's always been affordable. Yeah. Right, right, and that was thanks to the, the sort of that long-term, low-interest HUD loan and the annual operating subsidies that basically filled the gap between what low-income residents could afford and what it cost to operate the property plus, you know, a certain amount for, uh, for a reasonable amount for profit and, and mm -hmm. for uh, setting money aside. Um, what, what, I, what I love uh, about that, too, it's a very cooperative type of structure so that all of our rents go into our operating budget, and um, there's no, you know, fat cat landlord that's that's getting rich off of, uh, of off of the rents. Right. The rents are always done to um, support the salaries um, of the property ma management company and to um, to improve the. Right. So we have a long-range capital plan where, um, you know, the roofs get replaced on a regular schedule. I know all of the heating systems have been replaced again because the major renovations happened in the early 90s during, uh, you know, right after the residents bought uh, the property from, uh, from the former owner. Uh, and 20 years later, we had to replace all those because heating systems only last Correct. so long and roofs only last so long and siding only lasts so long and yes. fences, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I, I will say, you know, as someone who's worked in affordable housing for uh, over 30 years now, you know, Northgate is uh, one of the, uh, uh, I, I would say, really well maintained. And if you look at it, you know, compared to other, you know, non uh, non affordable market rate uh, rental property, it's, it's certainly really well kept. I, I, I remember the first time I walked into Northgate, I saw those beautiful hardwood floors and, right. Uh, right. oh my God, I, I mean, <laughs> if I'd still been renting, I would have applied for <laughs> to live at Northgate. I, I had a friend visit from New York one time, upstate New York, and uh, uh, this was back when we first moved in in 1993, and uh, she said, Th this is affordable housing. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you've been a resident also. Yes, and, I am still a resident. And you're still a resident, right. 26 years. Right. And, mm -hmm. and also a former board member. Former I, I board have, member. I should have mentioned that. Um, <laughs> now, now retired and doing a second second job. Um, yes, it's my... Second, second career. That's right. <laughs> Great. Well, um, 
We're, uh, you know, the 30 minutes that we have uh, goes by really fast. We've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, I'd like to turn to uh, our most recent project. Um, we recently completed a, a major project at Northgate, uh, a kind of a retrospective or a, a, a timeline. And uh, Carol actually has a, a laptop over here, and she's going to uh, show us a couple of highlights from that. Um, so uh, if uh, folks uh, in, the, in the back room there could... Uh, um, put that up there. It's on screen. So, Carol, want to guide us through what, what this is all about? And let me just, before you do, let me just also give huge credit to uh, CCTV here, Channel 17, which um, we at Northgate hired Channel 17 to help us uh, sort through uh, just reams and reams of uh, a photographs. After a bidding process. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. It was not a sweetheart deal. That's right. Uh, unlike the old Northgate. Um, uh, we put out bids, got competitive bids, and CCTV won that. And um, so they sorted through uh, free press clippings, photographs, uh, archival video, and um, so it was Carol, a take it away. Gargantuan, gargantuan task. And to tell you the truth, um, we didn't realize how big it was. Yeah. Uh, we totally un underestimated this whole project. But this is our timeline. Um, it'll be here. It is on the computer screen. What we did, um, we, we wanted to capture what Northgate was all about. We, we didn't want to lose the history. And, um, you know, 50 years ago, that's a, that's a long time. And we realized that many of the folks who remembered what Northgate is and was, um, you know, they, they are either a aging or they're, they're not around anymore. So we decided that we had to capture this. What the timeline does is it goes through um, the different major events. As you can see in the late 60s here, it, 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 it says that there, there was um, a, a housing crunch, much like, like today. Um, and so it, it kind of goes through uh, the, 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 different, the different articles from the free press um, kind of outlining what ha what that, had to happen. That, that headline could have been written today. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. There are many headlines in here that, that, yeah. that could have been, yeah. Um, yeah. Housing a shortage. Employment boom. Yeah. I mean, what are we having today? An, an, right. an employment I mean, boom. Lowest, like, one of the lowest unemployment rates right. in the country. And, that's yeah. right. Um, so we, we go through these different panels. Um, uh, I want to slowly scroll down here. Uh, we did an interview with some of the major players uh, like Gus Seelig and, and Brent, Brenda Torpy and Peter Clavel. Um, and uh, this is, is, a, is a video here and, and it, it goes throughout the timeline. It's very, very interesting as, as these key players really talk about and remember their experiences. Right. Because one of the things about Northgate, if I might just add, is it's very significant in sort of the overall, not just a significant resource for Burlington and a significant uh, part of Burlington's housing history. It's part of state housing history, and Northgate was uh, instrumental in um, having in, in getting those of us who were involved in housing statewide back in the day uh, to understand that because of these potentials for uh, private sector developers that were developing HUD-funded housing, uh, because of their ability to opt out of their affordability restrictions, um, we needed to um, uh, make some major changes in state policy, uh, which involve making the housing that we invest public dollars in permanently affordable as opposed to just affordable for 15 or 20 or, or 30 years. So Vermont's kind of unique when I look around at the country, around the country uh, to other states and how they do affordable housing. Vermont's pretty unique in that. And we learned this lesson from Northgate and from a couple of other, a uh, couple that got away, mm. uh, a couple of projects. You used to live uh, out in Essex uh, at Indian Brook, which yes. was condominiumized. And, um, and I was displaced. And you were displaced. Yes. Um, so that was a hard lesson learned yes. in the 80s. And that was one of the reasons why uh, we um, made such an emphasis on uh, um, saving Northgate, but then embedding the lessons learned from that in state policy, in state funding policy. Uh, and they've been there ever since. And this timeline, we're hoping to, to get this out to, uh, to more people than, than simply uh, Burlington. Right. Um, Northgate's a national model, yeah. and um, 
People in California know more about Northgate than some people in Vermont do, which is quite interesting. But I, I just want want to uh, to you know, if if you see one bedroom ninety dollars, two bedrooms one hundred four, three bedrooms one seventeen. Wow! And I'm not sure <laughs> Those what, are the days, huh? what the what the structure was for for that, but um, you know, it's 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 not that much more depending on the the uh, tier that people are in. Um, and down here, there's, oh, there's our Linda. friend Linda. <laughs> And this is what Northgate looked in when it was um, oh, can, yeah, can, can very you, uh, bad. Can you uh, uh, magnify yes, that for a second? I can. Look at that beautiful dark brown, yeah. wow. dark brown siding. This is, this is what the residents were saying. Um, there was no insulation. It was, it was horrible. Um, you know, there, there was so much wrong. I remember reading a letter from um, Burlington Electric at, at the time to the property ma management yeah. um, beforehand, who said, um, we can't do anything with these windows. Nothing fits. Right. It's, uh, it, was, it was horrible. I noticed from the headline that you, or the article that you just uh, mm -hmm. uh, showed, another thing I remember was people didn't want to go to Northgate because right. it had a stigma. Yes. Right. I mean, look at it, it, you know, the way it looked yes. um, is kind of the way people thought about it also. It was, it was right. depressing, yes. yep. it looked depressing, it was yeah. depressing to live there. People, um, people were paying through the nose um, on their uh, heating and their, the housing was, was not in good shape and it was also not really safe. There were, uh, it had a real stigma. Nobody wanted to go to Northgate. Right. If you lived at Northgate, you had a, you know, you had a stigma attached to you almost. And I, and I think that um, people were, lo were losing hope. Yeah. Um, let's see. I, I, I just wanted, I, you know, I, I showed you the, the horrible one. Yeah. Northgate today, I, I did just want to, this was uh, our, one of our barbecues. This is our kids fishing derby. This is the Northgate. That's the uh, entrance, right? This is the entrance today. Um, our harvest festival. This is fire safety day. Um, this is one Here's of our, Baba. yep, our, our, a young girl who decided to raise money for um, Christian Kababu's uh, memory. Um, wow. This, if you, you can see in the background, this is what Northgate looks like today um, without the snow, of a course. A little different. Yes. A little different. Um, <laughs> and this is one of our playgrounds. So th this is what Northgate looks today. It's beautiful. It has great cur curb appeal. People have hope. Very diverse. Very diverse. Um, and uh, and one, one last thing that uh, Bernie Sanders, of course, was mayor of, of Burlington at, at that time. And I know we have, uh, there's our there's mayor, Peter Clavel. Peter Clavel. Uh, he is here. Here's, here's, you know what, many, many people claim Bernie was our hero yeah. and is. And this is him saying that, you know, you can't displace 336 families. It's, it, it is, it's, it's just wrong on every level. Wow. <laughs> and, and yeah, imagine how transformational it might be if he becomes our president, but um, <laughs> we're not, we're not going to make political statements now. Uh, so any, any parting thoughts? Um, Linda, you still live at Northgate? Has I it, do. And I plan to live there until Someone calls me home. Oh, well. <laughs> it's my home. That's going to be a long time from now. I know. You've got, she's got more energy than I do, and probably Carol put together. So, um, Carol, any, uh, we've got about a minute left. Any parting thoughts from, from you? I, I guess my parting thoughts are that uh, Northgate is a gem, and uh, it is the best-kept secret, I think, of Burlington. Um, people, we need more Northgates. Um, my brother just moved to Oregon, and they just instituted rent control there, and he said they're not doing a very good job about it. They need more Northgates. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> and for more Northgates, what we need is we need more federal and state, state funding, funding, because yes. without the public resources that go into this, um, we will not be able to save more Northgates or build new Northgates. So one quick plug, I'll just say, if you, uh, anyone in the audience is looking for a great affordable community to live in, 
Call 658-2722. That is the phone number of uh, Maloney Properties. Um, they'll tell you how to apply. There is a waiting list. Uh, depends on uh, how long it is, depends on what uh, the bedroom size is that you're looking for and whether or not you need affordable unit or not. But um, call them or go to the website and we've got some uh, resources uh, that are going to be posted here during the credits at the end. And I'll just say uh, thank you and tune in again on uh, Wednesday, August 7th uh, at 525 when we'll have the next Vermont Affordable Housing, uh, next edition of the Vermont Affordable Housing Show. And thank you both for being here today. Thank you, thank you. for having us. Thank you.